welcome to the Industry Angel Podcast. We hear from the best business minds across the globe, entrepreneurs, social influencers, marketing mavens, and sales rock stars. We've got them all. Here comes your weekly dose of inspiration with your host, Ian Farah. Welcome back to another live streamed episode of the Industry Angel number 219. Well, we've had a bit of a gap with the episodes, what with me caption COVID, and then the kids, my son and daughter got it, you know, and then I lost my mojo for a couple of weeks, and then we had a couple of city breaks, but now I'm back firing again, so uh, hopefully we'll get normal service resumed and get some regular shows. Thanks for all the messages, and of course, a few of you uh, messaged me saying you spotted me on ITV's Vera as well, which was good fun to, to record. And things have really picked up here at Far North. Lots of coaching, training from my side, producer Misha's side on the digital divisions, really kicking on with social content, websites, SEO, that kind of thing. Uh, I haven't got many speaking gigs lined up this year as yet. I was kind of waiting to see what the appetite was. And a lot of them are still virtual, all these conferences. So if you know any that I should be speaking at or attending, feel free to let me know. So today's guest has been an interview that I've been wanting to secure for quite some time now. This lady has helped me so much this last year or so, both in my professional and personal life. You know, I've been through a a rocky couple of years I'm still waiting to move house 18 months after putting it up for sale and I'm desperate to get moved, desperate to get the kids and I all packed and and out in a new home because we've been living out of boxes for quite some time now. And I think it's really important to check in with your mental health and none more so than now, you know, post-COVID. So today's guest has really been wonderful in helping me. I'd like to bring that to you. So keep an eye on the social media as we'll be recording a couple of more of these live stream episodes very soon. And if you missed the live, you can, of course, watch up and catch up on the various channels such as YouTube or Facebook. Okay, then let's hear from today's guest. Co-founder and director of Just Breathe, mental health specialist, Jeanette Maris. Jeanette has a plethora do you like that word? I do. Very impressed. Of knowledge, including clinical counselling, master clinical hypnotherapist, NLP master practitioner, EMI practitioner, and EMDR practitioner. I have no idea what all that is. Okay. But I'm sure you do. Yes. And um, so I was prepared. I was prepared. I just did that earlier on. Can you see how nervous Jeanette is? She didn't sleep very well last night. Um, <laughs> thinking about this, uh, I slept like a baby. Yes, not bothered, not bothered <laughs> at all. But it is because I've done this loads of times, but for the first time, this is the first time you've gone live, I guess? Yeah, first time. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Mm, thank you for inviting um, me. Can you see on the top right, top left, we've got a love there. Katie's given us a love. So Uh-oh. can you give Jeanette some love, please? Because she's a bit <laughs> nervous. So hit the, the love button. Also hit the share button because it's going to be great today. We're going to hear a lot about, um, as I said, Jeanette's a mental health specialist. I was really passionate to get... Jeanette on this show. I've tried for many uh, a month, I'm going to say, to get her on. Yeah. Because Jeanette helped me so much. I'm glad you joined us. Glad to be here. Right, we've got a little bit of a bandwidth issue sometimes, so but we'll, be, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Okay. Right then, so what Jeanette's done is she's given me a list of questions to ask her and she's told me to not go off piece, make sure, she's, <laughs> make sure I ask them in order. <laughs> Don't ask it anything into oh. order, which we never do, do we? are going to die. <laughs> but what happens is we get questions from the audience. So if you've got a question for Jeanette, please feel free to throw it in the comments. I'm sure Jeanette will answer it. I mean, she's got so much knowledge, she'll, yeah, she'll answer anything sure. really. Be fine. So, should we just kick on? Yeah, Give yeah. It a go? Right. So, as I say, Jeanette's given me a list of questions <laughs> to ask, and the first one is um, company intro. So, well, Jeanette. You sent me a list of questions. It, it was me, it was me. Yeah. Um, company intro, Jeanette. So, as I said, you're from Just Breathe. Give us a little whistle stop tour of what the, the business does and who for as well. Okay, so previously the old police station in Jarrow. Clairvaux, because uh, I thought it was Clairvaux, you know, posh. No, Clairvaux, well, Clairvaux, some say. Come Clairvaux, on, Clairvaux, get Clairvaux, the Clairvaux, French. Clairvaux, Clairvaux. Get your French accent on. But it's now, um, as I say, it was a police station, but it's now an amazing <clears throat> business and conference centre. 
Um, we absolutely love it in there. They've got amazing facilities. Um, lovely carpets. Yeah, lovely carpets, yes. Uh, it's owned by the Avado Group, and um, they've got some, well, many um, business and uh, conference centres. So we deliver counselling, clinical hypnotherapy, NLP, life coaching, Reiki. We're both Reiki masters. Are you a Reiki master as well? Yeah. I did not know that. Combination therapies, but Francine's, Francine's better than me. Uh, we also do veteran support as well. Uh -huh. And we do mental health first aid training. That's to, at the moment, predominantly to corporate, uh, to companies, to us for small to medium business. And we also do drug and alcohol testing. Okay, well, thanks, Alice. That's, that's a brief intro and uh, background. Should we go background? What's your background? Background. Okay, so I suppose my, what you mean what brought me to doing well, what I do? Today, yes, you or, could do. Yeah? So, well, I suppose as a young child, I was always fairly intuitive. I used to ask a lot of questions. Absolutely loved, loved observing people and their behaviour. Got me into a few sticky situations growing up. My mum used to do a lot of shh. Um, <laughs> It's not the right thing to ask, Jeanette. Anyway, so um, I kind of knew as I got older that <laughs> that I was going to end up working in this field. I just didn't know how that was mm -hmm. going to come about. But I suppose the the main catalyst for me was um, end of 2006. My nephew was out serving in Afghanistan um, with 2-9 Commando and um, unfortunately lost his leg in an explosion. Right really really pleased to say he's done amazing kind of defied the odds and mm -hmm. um he's doing fantastic now um but at the time obviously it was a massive shock for uh for the family especially his mum and dad um, and his brothers and sisters but for myself as well that meant a lot of traveling backwards and forwards to um Celio hospital in birmingham you're supporting um, what's it called to show his name or? so um anthony anthony, anthony. so you're supporting anthony after um, the incident? Not, not so much in, in this field because I hadn't started my training then, but supporting him oh, as, right, as okay. an auntie, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the family looking after my brother and sister. And at that time, I think there was just one ward and it was literally just full of um, young, limbless guys who had gone through horrific trauma. Wow. Observing, uh, you know, everything that I witnessed going on mm -hmm. um, in in that ward, and at the time, actually, um, I've just bought his book. Uh, ben Parkinson was, and I think he uh, to date is the um, the worst injured from the Afghanistan war. He was still there then. Well, he was there long after Anthony, um, and kind of having chats with his mum in the day, mm -hmm. home and, mm -hmm. and the struggles that you know they were going through, um, and she was really struggling to get him the help. That he needed. Eventually, Anthony was allowed home, and from getting him home, we struggled to even get him a dressing change. Never mind any kind of psychological help. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so it was really clear that it was needed. So mm -hmm. I ended up going there to uni. Got my degree in counselling psychology. Was that? that was back in two thousand. Um, I got my degree two thousand and fourteen. Right. But started <coughs> training kind of long before that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but then I started, before that, I started work for, um, as a caseworker for the Royal British Legion, mm -hmm. helping ex service men, women, and their families to kind of reintegrate back into um, civilian life, uh, which I absolutely loved. Brynn's just put a comment on there. I'm going to, I'm going to flash this up because it's a good comment. Basically, what you're saying is there is um, it's great to see mental health come to the forefront of people's minds when folks were merely forgotten and hidden away. Those men and women who served, obviously, on that ward, as Bryn says, they're hidden away. We don't see that. That's sort of something that's yeah. not really shown. Or in, in, so in terms of support for Anthony and colleagues going forward, is there, is there support there? Do you feel like... Well, I'm pleased to say it's a lot better than, than it? it was then, going right. back then. Mm. There wasn't the... But I think also at, at that time, they they struggled to ask for help mm. to a certain degree. A lot of them still do. Certainly, um, a lot of the veterans that I see struggle to... So you're talking, you know, years of, of suffering, and if not longer, mm. before they reach out and ask for help. But to be fair, some of them do try. You know, they'll go through the NHS, but then they're put on a waiting list, mm. and they're forever. But now you've kind of got the likes of Combat Stress, which are brilliant, um, and, you know, the Royal British Legion. 
they all signpost and there's lots of many many other charities out there that are um, specifically set up for that for veteran support but I think there just needs um, there just needs to be more more awareness and mm-hmm. more understanding that you know it's not a, a sign of weakness mm. it's just something that we all need it's all people who don't know they need support and this is what I'm really interested yeah. in because when you and I first met I didn't feel like I needed to support and I remember a month or two ago when you said, Kim, I don't remember saying this to me, when you walked in here and you were a mess. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I didn't realise that I needed, yeah. I needed, mm-hmm. I needed help. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I've been totally open with on the show numerous times about my corporate burnout. And I think this hustle culture we're in now from a business point of view, it's almost like, you know, lunch is for losers. You know, you, you don't sleep, you, you get up, you hustle. And yeah. I was a victim of that like three times I burned out. Yeah. Um, and, and I've spoken about this many times, hospitalised and everything. I've only just now come to kind of, not terms with it, but all be mindful of my mental health. Yeah. And the need to come off the gas a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I want you to talk a little bit about support in the workplace as well, if we can, if we can go there. Yeah. So firstly, when it comes to the workplace, it's absolutely integral that managers, company owners are um, aware of their staff. Okay. And yes, they've all, they've all been hired for an individual role to um, fulfill a job, but they're not just a job role. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about investing in their staff and, you know, any manager or company owner who's worth a soul should invest in their staff. I mean, their staff's well-being, recognising their staff, but being aware of how they are um, in work. Are they presenting? Um, are they coming in work late? Um, are there issues there? checking in with our staff it's vital that they have one-to-ones um and they sit down and really get to know the staff because the more they invest in their staff the more they feel valued and then the more they're going to get back in return something really important there that kind of not a penny drop moment but something i really want to highlight to the audience is i had said that i didn't know that i needed help what you're saying there as leaders we should be watching out for this stuff because Staff might not need the no-help, but us as leaders have to be mindful of, Absolutely. I think I'm putting too much on that person, or Susie's not looking too grand yeah. today, or, mm-hmm. you know, Paul's, you know, feels like he's got the will to work on his shoulders. So as leaders, we need to be mindful of that. Absolutely. Okay. First and foremost, you have a duty of care Yeah, yeah. Um, to those staff members. But, you know, remembering if, if you're not keeping an eye on your staff and volume, then at the end of the day, when it comes to business, it's going to affect your bottom line. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. And when it comes to business, although it mm. shouldn't be, you know, it, it inevitably is about that bottom line. So it's support there, but making time for your staff, but being genuine about that. So it's not just, oh, how are you? How was your day? Yeah. It's not, you know, how are you? What, what's happening? Do you know what it is? I always say, listen. So that's easy, yeah. really easy to go. How are you doing today, Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. No, but how are you doing? Like, oh, how was your weekend the other day? And uh, how did Amelia do when she did that thing? Yeah. And mm-hmm. being able to like actually have some interest yes. with authenticity, yeah. Yeah. not just saying it. Yeah, definitely. Um, there has to be the foundations there and mm. and built on. So you do know your staff members. It, it's incredibly important. Mm. Also, I'm really interested in this sort of proactive approach. Yes. So. That's what I was talking about before about the support thing. Not you know you might not know you need support. I don't want people to have support when they need it. I want them to have it when they don't need it to avoid them needing it. If you know what I mean. Absolutely, absolutely. You know? So there's there's the proactive support mm. or the reactive support. Um, this is something <clears throat> I had experience of at um, college when I worked there for mm-hmm. many years with staff and students. It became more and more clear that there needed to be a proactive approach. There's absolutely no point in a in a staff member or a student getting to crisis moment okay. before you intervene. Um, yeah. It's about making sure that there are things in place. So um, along the lines of so um, in college, we set up a separate room so mm-hmm. staff members could go and just kind of chill out. You know, if they were having a bad day, if they were struggling, um, or if they were struggling at home, or there's other things going on. That it was kind of that, that time out room where they could go and just take five, but not feel that they were going to be judged harshly by their team leader yeah. because they needed that time. It's it's incredibly important that, that that's there. So trying to firefight, if you like, rather than being proactive, yeah. then you're constantly kind of at that front line trying to keep everything at bay when you, know, you may not have needed to be there in the first place. Isn't that a culture, though? I think so. A culture and works. It's how do you harvest that culture? 
it's got to be top down, isn't it? It's got to be a, a leadership approach where it this has is to come the, from the top. Yeah. Absolutely. So again, this is when we come back to um, implementing coping strategies along the way before. So. Do they have regular staff one-to-ones? Do they sit down individually with their staff and say, right, what's happening? How are things at home? Um, are there any issues? Mm-hmm. Anything that we should know about? Or more than anything we can help with. But also knowing that they are go-to people within their team that they can talk to. Right, okay. So this brings us to mental health first aid training. So when we do that... You need to get that plug in. I am saying. Jeanette does mental health first aid training, by the way. Um, telephone number? No, no, no. Go on, sorry. I just, sorry, yeah. <laughs> You have that at the end. But it's about identifying. So um, when we deliver mental health training, there's always those few key members of staff that mm-hmm. present as, and, and you know that uh, they are the rescuers, if you like. Yeah, yeah. And that's just uh, a natural flow for them mm. to be that rescuer. So you identify who they are. So they may be end up being sort of team leaders. So then mm-hmm. other staff members. Um, so they're trained up to be team leaders and then other staff members then know who they are and that they can go to them. Mm. And then there's another one that we do for managers. I'm, um, I'm smiling away here. I'm sorry, to I'm smiling away here because I love this. This is such a massive passion for me mm-hmm. to make sure that our workplaces have this. And, and, and I can almost visualise what you've just said there about having team leaders all mm-hmm. mental health trained and then someone. So what, what, would a, what would a typical thing, you know, like, so someone's on shift or something, and the, what would that approach be like? What would a typical scenario look like? I guess it could come from many different areas, but uh-huh. um, one in particular, I don't know, somebody's um, struggling with family issues at okay. home. Okay, okay. So they're not able to leave that at home, so they come home and they're definitely presenting as, you know, not on on, yeah. on goal, not yeah, no perhaps firing. not performing. As yeah, so it's not like just like, seen. I've got a massive workload, I can't handle, it could be, mm-hmm. but but again, it could be something like, you know, I've had a, a death in the family or, yeah. I, you know, I, my daughter's ill or something. Loss, grief, trauma, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anything um, along those lines. But kind of um, linking back in bosses and managers being mindful of job roles and, okay, you start a job, yes, this is your remit, this is your role, this is what you need to do for this company. Um, these are your responsibilities. Mm-hmm. And then a few days down the, the road, oh, by the way, can you just... Can you just do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you yeah, just yeah. have this? And then, and especially if they're fairly new employees that they're not wanting <coughs> to say, oh, oh, no, I can't do that. I can't manage. Mm. Because then, you know, when things come along, um, like um, progression, promotion, they'll remember that I said no, yeah. or I can't do that. So I'll be bypassed. You must have been there. <laughs> I've been there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, oh, definitely. You know, yeah. I talk about my burnout stories. It is, it's like just yes. Mm-hmm. The answer is just yes. It, Maybe that's a generational generational thing, though, that we, we were brought up with that, where you just, like... Suck it up and you get on. Yeah. Because you have that learned behaviour, that understanding that, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. And this then takes us into the psychology side of things. So, as I've explained to you before, we have an internal locus of evaluation and an external locus of evaluation, and that could be, um, so, oh, here's Mick, this is what Mick's expecting from me, so I'll present as that. But internally, there could mm. be a lot going on. So you're not coping, but you don't want to present that at work or to me yeah. or to Tom or, mm. you know, Harriet or Sharon. You don't want to present in this way. So mm. this is what they expect from you. So I'll give them. How many times have I said to you that I'd be standing on a stage at a conference doing a, a speech, mm. but behind the eyes, I'm like really struggling yeah. with work mm. and have family life. Pull that mask on going back especially through the the breakup of my marriage mm-hmm. um struggling with with personal things um at home so my daughter Amelia is autistic so it was the whole struggle um through getting her diagnosed do i allow my daughter to take medication oh my god uh, the, the thought of having uh, your daughter on medication but then doing enough research into to think well no if she doesn't have this then she's not going to be able to cope mm-hmm. in school she's not going to be able to channel she's not going to be able to learn so but it's weighing things up and knowing what is the right thing to do and mm. second guessing yourself am i doing the right thing here but it's dealing with the pressures at home um, and then still carrying on working, but presenting in the way that you know or think. Well, I'm really glad to, to see this. Sorry, LinkedIn news. I don't know what you might, might, might want to pop your name on the end of these comments if you, if you want so I can see. We've got health 
advocates and buddies for staff this year, as I said. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's yeah, really, 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 really reassuring. Really yeah. And if you have got that, drop that in the comments. I'd be really interested in. That's really reassuring to see that there, there is that in the workplace. And I'd really be interested to see if, if that's becoming a trend now, because as we just touched upon earlier on, maybe, you know, a generation or so ago, yeah. might not have been a thing. Mm -hmm. And and I suppose going back into, into the mental health, it just wasn't something that you spoke about. Yeah. Um, it was very much a taboo subject. And I think going back into the into the forces side of things, it definitely wasn't something, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm a soldier, I'm mm. a marine, I'm a um, sailor, what, we don't do this. Yeah. We just Is that don't. still the case? Not so much now, I don't think. I still think there's a way to go. I think possibly more so um, those that have, you know, veterans now who've left and maybe have, certainly my experience, um, it's a caseworker in the Legion, uh, even though they were entitled to ask for help from the Royal British Legion, they, it was the end of the road for them, the fact that they needed to ask mm -hmm. for help. I can remember going out on many visits and people just in bits because they've, you know, they've had, it's come to this. Mm. Or I heard that sentence so many times, I can't believe it's come to this, that I've had to ask for help. Right, I okay. really don't want to be doing that. And that was awful. But as I say, luckily things are hopefully progressing in the right direction. I still think there needs to be a lot more government funding, though. Don't get me on that soapbox. <laughs> Don't get me there. Um, me thanks, Karen. Lovely for you to join us, Karen. Just put her name in the comments there. Oh, hi, Karen. Um, the gaffer, Misha, is telling us to turn my mic down, which I've done. Is um, it too loud, Misha? Well, it's probably me. You're <laughs> lo lovely and gentle, and I'm not. Um, right, what does your day to day look like? Oh, um, day to day. So it's predominantly kind of um, looking after people like me. Looking after people like you, yeah. <laughs> one to one sessions yeah. um, in my office, kind of working, you know, the way that I do. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of collectively, making sure I'm keeping up with my notes, any referrals that I have to do on a day to day basis, or for delivering training that day, mm -hmm. or we're carrying out drug and alcohol, which sometimes you know we have to travel for. So um, mm -hmm. a lot of the times in London. But it's always a break from the office and meeting with potential um, corporate clients, new customers. Mm -hmm. So, and again, this is why the facility is at um, Clairvaux. <laughs> nicely done, nicely done. Um, it's so amazing for us. So we've got the boardroom there. We've got the grand chambers that, that we deliver training in. Yeah. So literally everything's there that we need. It's lovely, you know, when I come and see you because it is like you've got it set up so calm and, and like inviting and we just sit like this, actually, isn't yeah, it? Like, yeah. you know, yeah. across the road, away from each other, and you're just like, right, how's things been going? And it's like, I tell people so much. When I was a boy, my auntie, and I'll give you a quick story. My auntie lives in Canada. Mm -hmm. And I went out there when I was like 13, I think, for the six, six weeks old days. The family's go and see a therapist. Yeah. It's the thing. And the that thing, was yeah. in late 80s, 90s. And I don't think that was a thing for us. Yeah. Now, you know, when, when you and I first met, I'd said, everybody, you need to do this. Even if you've got nothing going on, it's just a chat. Yeah. Someone will listen, ask questions. You said to me the first time you went, I'll challenge you. And I, <laughs> and I, lo I love that because I really do love that. Because did. Yeah, you did. You did and you did and you do. I do mm -hmm. you as well. Yeah. We'll, have, we'll have this relationship with Will. Yeah. That, that is great. And there's nothing to be scared of. It, no one's no. right or wrong. It's opinions and everything. But just making you make me see things from another side. Yeah. Or just bring me back and go, do you not think this? Or why do you think that might happen? I just love that. I don't know where I'm going with this. But mm. I think it's so important that, that we have that. And, it, yeah. and, it, and it's and it's accepted that we have that, like it absolutely. was in the States across yeah. the pond. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. They do. They all have my therapist. They, they all have a therapist. Eventually, I mean, it is getting better here. And eventually it will be that. So we have physical MOTs every year. So why don't we have mental mm. health check-ins? every year why don't we um yep. choose to fully embrace and choose to be the best absolute best version of ourselves love that and present in that way you know we're only here once it's about making the most of it mm. you know i'm a fan of stories yeah and and i've and i give you this question tell us some stories because some i think stories. we can relate to them okay so, um obviously you've got sensitivity and yeah, yeah. confidentiality but some ideas or some stories about you know, where you step in and, you know. Okay. Well, 
One in particular that when, as I said, we, we had never envisaged in a million years that we were going to be doing drug and alcohol testing. Mm -hmm. um, there's a story connected to that, actually. That okay. was quite funny. I do our training, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. You ask me about that in a bit. Oh, will do. Um, so, but because we started doing that in companies that we were working for, uh, we also provide them in health training and well-being for staff. And one time in particular, um, we had a guy who's actually an ex-veteran who'd presented and it's part of their contract when they start work for the company that they have um, a drug and alcohol test. Mm -hmm. So we went down, we did that um, and it was positive. But what we were able to do because of that was then implement the the right help, the right professional support okay. to be able to um, help him find out what was going on and why this was happening in the first place. In this particular occasion, obviously no names mentioned. For him, it was again just readjusting to civilian life okay. and the pressures of it yeah. and stepping out from that being where everything's there yeah. to the civilian life. And he really struggled with that, but didn't ask for help. Okay. So he then used um, his own, so everything is a coping mechanism. So mm. the, the issues around him were... Um, what he was using as coping mechanisms. So once we were able to investigate that and help him find, um, to change that behaviour, if you like, because everything we do is a behaviour, he was able to settle down. We were able to mediate with his bosses. Luckily, he was able to keep his job. But because of that, he's now so much more invested in his role. Excellent. They are getting so much more from him. Mm -hmm. And we've actually heard through the grapevine there's a few times that he's been um, approached, headhunted, but he's said, no, I'm staying with this company because they invested in me, so therefore I'm going to invest in them. Yeah. Um, so that was amazing. That, that was really So good. that's kind of turning the, you know, the drug and alcohol testing on its head a little, a little bit. I, I imagine when people think of drug and alcohol testing, it's like I want to know who, I want to know who, and maybe then mm -hmm. let them go. Yeah. But this is more of a let's find out and then support. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I love that. And when uh, when Francie and I um, go down to do that, we we always take that time to connect with who with whoever we're working, even though they're just there for that specific test. You know, you yeah. ask about them, you ask about the day, how long, you know, um, who did you work for before, etc. Ninety-nine point nine percent of them have got you know nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. They still get nervous because oh, what happens if something comes back? You know, <laughs> yeah. What happens if that sherry trifle is going to show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we actually had one lady say that. Oh really? Um, she had it about four days before, oh, but never my mind. Word. So yeah, the, the the two marry really well, mm. um, and we're really really pleased that we did that now. I've spoke to you about can can we go, can we go COVID? Can we yeah, still, yeah, can yeah. we can we can yeah. we still can we still do this? We can do COVID. Um, we've spoke about this before, and I'm really interested the way people are starting to return to work. There's going to be anxieties around that. There's going to be a bit of, you know, do I wear a mask? Do, don't I wear a mask? Yeah. Oh, and there's a lot of stuff there. How do we as leaders bring people back to work? What could we do? How could we ensure that we're all firing? Going back to work is a bit like having an induction again. Well, yeah. Even like he has the health and safety. Yeah. Remember this, that, and the other. Because the, some people have been out for like 18 months. Well, yeah, it's being mindful uh, again, making, especially if they're coming back in the office. I mean, there's so many businesses now, I think, um, have realised that, let's just say, it, they can save money by not having that, yeah. um, that office space. Mm -hmm. But there are equally those that will thrive in the office environment and, you know, the, the office banter <laughs> and <me>. connecting <laughs> with people. And, yeah, I, yeah. <clears throat> most of the, apart from the first one, um, the lockdown, I carried on working, obviously being sort of frontline in, in yeah. my office, but I think I probably would have, you know, struggled just having to be at home all the time. So, yeah. and a lot of people, you know, ended up disconnecting from themselves because mm -hmm. of that sort of socially and emotionally. So um, that's certainly this case where children are concerned. So, yeah, so as far as bosses, it's just making sure um, there's a clear policy as far as what's expected of them from uh, a COVID um, standpoint. So this is what we expect you to do, making it clear, clear instructions. But clearly letting them know that if there are any issues, then please, you know, come to see me. I'm all, um, we talk about this proact proactive approach and reactive approach. Mm -hmm. Could we do something where 
you have a, a number of days where you go into a, an organization and just do a like an MOT, like a health check yeah. and maybe like a couple of days, like mm-hmm. check in. How, how would that work? Yeah. What could you do? So what we do now, so we offer kind of bespoke packages to mm-hmm. um, companies. So I guess companies come in to, um, to chat with us, let us know how many members of staff they've got, what kind of cover they would like. So we can then go in and do mental health workshops, if you like, just kind mm-hmm. of, you know, get to know your colleagues. This is very much an NLP thing as well, um, getting working in small groups and getting to know each other. So how often you see these huge offices, especially in finance, where it just seems to go on and on and on. Uh, The energy tends to really struggle um, in uh, places like that. So, you know, you might work at one end of of, of an office and somebody might work way down the other end. Mm. And you might yeah acknowledge them, but you don't know them. You don't know who they are. Right, okay. So have those connected, but it all leads at the end to a more constructive way of working, a more integrated way of Mm. working, setting those values out. Easy ways to implement that is maybe on a Friday afternoon, you know, saying, right, okay, uh, don't worry about bringing lunch in on a Friday. Uh, Let's, you know, work will supply that. Or how about if it's not, if the company's not that big, everybody just brings something in and we all sit down together and Mm -hmm. get around the table. Or have, we used to get them at college every now and again, half day Fridays, which was, woo. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. As that was in Newcastle, it was straight to the pub. But yeah. Yeah, well, the girls get half days Fridays, but yeah, I don't. You don't. Oh no. Poor Ian. <laughs> what a shame. Yeah, I'm really interested in that, and, and whether I don't know what that would look like because you know you talk about like lots of different people all kind of like working in little silos. What would you do? Get people together and give them exercises to do, or get them to re-engage yeah. and re-familiarize themselves with each other, or. So it's kind of that that check-in thing as well. Uh, That's something else that's really good to implement into a company, kind of have sort of morning Mm check-ins. As far as small groups uh, are concerned and sort of workshops, we'll kind of, first of all, allow them to sort of work with who they want, kind of groups of three, groups of two or whatever, and give them an exercise to do. And again, that can be something around finding out about um, maybe something that they want to do. So are they happy where they are? Do they want to progress in the company? How would they see that? So it then becomes a visual thing. So as you know, I'll say to them, okay, so see that, visualize it, Mm -hmm. um, allow yourself to feel that. What's that going to feel like? You know, how accomplished are you going to feel if you manage Mm -hmm. to achieve that? Let's really step into that. Let's hold on to that. So I did ask you this year, look. What? What have you seen trends of late? Again, COVID, huge amount of okay. um, uh, health anxiety. Um, what do you mean health anxiety? So down to the whole pandemic. So, you know, oh, am I going to get COVID? Am I okay. going to die? Are my children going to get it? What's the going to have on me? What's yeah. the, you know, how am I going to cope? Um, is my job going to be safe? Uh, right, okay. it, it, then that links into financial as well. So a lot of people have lost their jobs. So there's a lot of financial worry. Yeah. So what, as leaders, what, what, what could you do then to alleviate that worry? Would you do like a, like a talk? Would you get everybody together and just communicate? Oh, I'm a huge fan of communication. It has to be about communication yeah. and keeping that. And again, this is where the one-to-one, but then the group sessions as well. Mm-hmm. From a leader perspective, you know, you get everybody together and say, right, you know, this is where we are. This is where the company is. This is what we're doing. So keep them informed. You know, mm. your job is fine. It's safe. But then kind of from a one to one check in, this is what we expect. You know, I'm really pleased, you know, that you've delivered this, this and this. That, that was amazing work. Connect. Step into, I don't know, somebody else's energy, somebody else's model of the world. If you like. I think it is a good point connection. I mean, even even from a personal point of view, my pa's and I always used to get together on a Saturday mm-hmm. in the pub, five o'clock. We'd watch the football, we'd have a few beers. Yeah, just rant at each other about yeah. work, right? It's start the group. Mm-hmm. is like 25% of what it was. Yeah. Because this habit of not going out now mm-hmm. and not seeing it, it's just, we don't go out now. That's yeah. not a thing. It really worries me because the connection yeah. that you just said there, you lose it. So you disengage socially yeah. And, yeah. and emotionally. So it's, yeah. And how, how often, and I've heard it so many times, we know I've had text from such and such and, and messages, and I'm guilty of it to a certain degree, where you think, oh, I'll answer that later, I'll answer that later you just never get around to doing it. It's not because mm. you don't want to. It's okay. because we're putting other things first. But everything has to start with us. I've said to you many times, mm. it's got to start with us. 
and okay. where we're going from there. Because if we're not in a great place, if we're not firing all, all cylinders, yeah. then how are we going to then step in and be everything that we need to be, whether that be in a home environment or a work environment? Mm. You know, if you identify someone in the workplace who isn't, Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm thinking from a takeaway from somebody watching this. So they might have a colleague who, yeah. who, who they may see that's going a little bit down, or just not themselves. What, what, what could they do? What, what would you suggest? Sorry to put you on the spot here. But no, no, that's <laughs> fine. So if they see a colleague, yeah, um, you know, if you just feel someone's just not themselves, or so then talk. Right. Okay. Absolutely talk to say, look, I've noticed that you know, yeah. you're not, you don't seem to be yourself. You know. Um, that you genuinely care and it's not just a, a brush off it's, yeah um so what do you say like if you've got two minutes could you actually find yeah. having a coffee yeah. upstairs or yeah. somewhere or let's have outside. a walk maybe let's, co- let's go for a walk yeah outside is is brilliant you know i'm all about energy yeah yeah yeah. outside is is fantastic for and a release there's so much to be gained from that mm-hmm you don't, you don't all have to hug trees but you know i love a, I, I love hug, a good I, hug i do as well yeah so what's the future looking like then? So, we, you know, we're, we're kind of returning to work, if you like. How is Just Breathe going to react to this? Because I've certainly saw in our business things have really kicked on. People now are kind yeah. of wanting to do stuff. Mm-hmm. Our phone's ringing, our in- inbox is, is, you know, is yeah. increasing. What's next for you guys then? For us, it'll, it, it's kind of expansion. Um, we definitely want to expand. It's all about the flow for us. So the more you give, the more you receive that universal flow so it's about connecting um with as many businesses as many and there, there's no business really that would not benefit from having mental health support for their yeah. staff or packages in place so kind of reaching more people um and doing more we'd really like to push forward a little bit more with the veteran side oh, yeah. um, so we're kind of looking into that but again the, there's a huge amount of funding that's needed but in the meantime we still kind of do the do the one-to-ones and support wherever we can pushing forward and reaching as many as possible i'm going to let you hit hit the sales frontier because you mentioned packages and straight away in my mind you know i love <laughs> sales i'm like right yeah. what does a package look like how much is it what is it no so i'm not going to talk costs no. but what does a package look like like what did you mean so um so packages so we do bespoke packages whether they want to do it on a retainer purpose so we have companies that we do that for um so that means then basically that they have access to us <laughs> mm-hmm. so they they can call us um in the past we've done kind of telephone service as well sort of in in that interim but that involves kind of um if any mem- members of staff identifies needing help then um so at the moment we work with councils and and business so they will so local councils at the minute will just contact me and say you know can you see this member of staff Excellent. and they'll come for a set amount of sessions and that can be for any number of reasons you know they may have had some some time off sick uh, struggling with the covid or they could have lost their direction or burnout and in some cases um in in some companies it's because of you know bullying in the workforce so Mm. let's deal with this so that mediation kind of between perhaps two members of staff that are sort of clashing it's right let's pull this apart and let's find out what's going on that's really interesting i'll tell a story but i won't say who it was i was talking to a um a leader the other day and and we took a photograph of his of his team Mm-hmm. weren't the best of friends yeah and on the photograph they were stood next to each other with a really genuine smile wow. yeah. and he was like look at that because of the work they've done to you know make mm-hmm. sure everyone's firing yeah and that culture is tight and everyone's working together absolutely and he loved that yeah no oh, that's brilliant so uh, yeah packages can be from any um any kind of business um really Mm. that needs that that support a lot of our one-to-one stuff could be can come from any field so doctors nurses beauty industry we're doing a lot with um the beauty industry Mm. teaching is massive Mm. teachers and heads i'd wax lyrical about you i've I've said that i talk about you all the time because of (laughs) the opportunity to talk like this and yeah what i said before about like why would you go I think I went in for X and then you talk about Y and then I talk about Z and then we're on to C and then it's M and then I'm like, would, would you mind like doing this? And then it's just lovely yeah. because as you, as you like, especially this 80 months, as we get older, as our life changes, as work changes, pressures, relationships, marriages, children, 
it throws up lots of little things. Absolutely, yeah. And what I enjoyed about our relationship is, as these things throw up, mm -hmm. I'll just drop you a text and say, <laughs> can I pop in next Tuesday? And, and I'll talk about something that's on my yeah. mind or give me a little bit of ways mm -hmm. in the past. Ah, that's fine. That's fine. I'll just push yeah, it. Yeah, you suppress it. it so, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And that's what we can, and some people can do that for, for years, for decades. Yeah. They just, you just keep suppressing, but there's only so long that you can suppress your kind of um, emotional self, if you like. And um, I spoke earlier about that internal locus and the external locus. Mm. And what happens if we if we unplug emotionally for too long, then that gap then gets wider. Okay. So we lose we lose track of who you know who we are. Yeah. So we end up presenting. So we lose ourselves in in the Maya, if you like. You said about being the best version of yourself. Yeah. The more you work on yourself, then the more that's going to show because then that flow then continues. So you're feeling good, then you go out into the world and, and you, you throw that out. So mm. it's, yeah, that then will affect your colleagues at work, your staff at work. Definitely, yeah. And you're probably kinder on yourself. You know, you might not be, I don't know, maybe having a drink or something. To You know, when you, you, some people say they get, they get home on an evening, I'm so sick, and then they'll open a bottle of beer mm -hmm. or wine or something. Or maybe now they might go, well, I feel good. I'm not, not going to do that. Yeah. I don't need that crutch. Yeah. I'm going to go out for a walk and say, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm going to yeah. um, interact. I'm, I'm going to learn something new. I'm yeah. gonna... Don't get us wrong. I, I, I do that. <laughs> I, I do that to open a bottle of beer when I'm sick as a chip. <laughs> <laughs> what else have we got then? I'm just mindful of time. We've got 50 minutes there. Collaboration. I did put collaboration down because I thought about Adam that we had on the show yeah. from the health insurance group. And they have cash plans. I'm not... A, huge okay. expert on this but where you have something in place with the company where they can use firms mm -hmm. to help them Could you, can you talk about that because i'm not an expert so again that kind of comes down to um us kind of going out to see them or them coming to see us mm -hmm. and we need to know a little bit more about their business mm -hmm. and how they tick and what it is that um, they're looking to deliver uh, again, we'll go back to how many members of staff, but helping them to to uh, sometimes um, it can work from. Um, I know I understand what you're saying um, about Adam and what I'm offers, and that's brilliant. And yes, there's hopefully some work you know that we can do there together. That would be great. But maybe linking, I suppose, with other organisations mm -hmm. who need um, mental health support. Okay. Then yeah, absolutely, we can do that. What like what? So, in as far as we're probably talking along the well, any 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 genre really. So, education. Mm -hmm. um, so, in college, I, I know when I was working in the college, and still do have um, a fantastic counselling department there. Okay. And um, that's Newcastle College, brilliant. Uh, Carol, hi, uh, Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so they have a certain, well, they, they had a set regime and then where staff were concerned, we were at one point able to see staff, but then that was taken away. Mm -hmm. So then there was, there wasn't so much available for staff. So it's kind of a, perhaps a, col a collaboration there where we mm -hmm. can connect there. Um, I think there definitely needs to be more, more of that. But I suppose supporting um, charities, um, what have you, we work with a few charities. Um, so there's uh, Maxine Curl. She runs a charity called One Punch. She lost her son, Christian, right, yeah, to, so huh? um, to One Punch. Mm -hmm. She now works with uh, the probation service and mm -hmm. Northumbria Police in bringing awareness to that. And, you know, that's amazing. So we work with them as well and we do some support there. Let me get this charity right. Tracy Sinton, she supports a charity called the, I think it's a Future Charity, which she lost her son, bless him, when he was, uh, Joseph, when he was 10 to brain cancer. Oh. So they they work massively um, in fundraising for the RBI. All right, um, okay. they, they're right up there with them. So we've supported there as well. And they normally have kind of a, a ball every year that we go to mm -hmm. because of COVID. That's not been happening. No, it's I, know, fun I know. But she raises a huge amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, more recently, <clears throat> last Christmas, in fact, um, we supported Heaven Helps. 
Oh yes, uh -huh. and mm -hmm. um, we put a shout out there to all of our amazing friends because mm -hmm. um, we found out that there were vulnerable children living in the community. They have, um, I think, someone who kind of looks out for them, but they are living so from 14, 15, 16 year old, uh, and there weren't going to be anything for Christmas. So oh, they're predominantly like a food bank. So oh. they, I think they supply, um, a, well, Heaven Helps do amazing work with mm -hmm. um, uh, lots of charities, uh, kind of for the local community. But this was, we, we took this on, well, I should say Francine heard about it and came running to my office and said, oh, Jeanette, Jeanette, we can't, we can't let this, this can't happen, this can't happen, I can't have kids waking up on Christmas morning no. with nothing. <laughs> so we then went all out and we managed to, I think we, we did about 40 children, we took about 40 children on, but, you know, all of our friends and colleagues were amazing, so mm. dropping loads of stuff off. You know how you mentioned Francine there? Yeah. Shall we bring her in? You can bring Francie. <laughs> so you'll be watching this in the room. It's an experience for everyone. It is an experience for everyone. <laughs> she needs her five minutes of fame. I think it would be because she compliments you really well. Used to, uh, I've never known colleagues like you guys. You just fire so much. I'm going to move this because she might bull through this door. Yeah, knock her flying. Yeah, that would be about right. And knock that out of the way. Hopefully she's watching because I like her pop in because um, what would you say she is it like holistic side to the so, business? So no, Francine delivers mental health training as well. She's mm -hmm. fully qualified to deliver mental health training. Um, she also delivers Reiki training. Um, so, but I'll let her tell you because she's amazing. I can hear someone at the door. Got a special Come guest. In. Special guest. Hello. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Where should we shove her? Where should we shove her? <laughs> can you can you honk her down there? Do you think? Uh, oh, we're all good. We're all good. We're all good. You have to say hello. Hi. <laughs> I, I prefer that, Meg. <laughs> it's like I'm deck you can't shift me off the seat in the brain. Um, no, we're just talking about how you compliment um, Jeanette. Have you been watching? Yes. She's done all right, isn't she? Brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I told you to be all right. Yeah. Um, what do you do? What's your role then? So. I just breathe on the one-to-one -one side of things. I do Reiki and mm -hmm. relaxation techniques with people. Mm -hmm. On the corporate side of things, I deliver mental health first aid training, workshops, the drug and alcohol testing, visiting um, companies to put reviews in place, discuss packages. What do you mean by packages? Tell us about that. So everything you've been discussing, oh, right, really, okay. you know, companies get in touch and they, they may have individuals that just want to get help mm -hmm. or they may want to make some big changes to the workplace. A lot of the time, you know, they want to tick some boxes and achieve some ISOs. Mm -hmm. So oh, right, okay. I didn't think about that. they need to do some investment mm -hmm. to get there. Mm -hmm. Good. So we're brought in. I'm expecting big things. We do not think like juggle <laughs> fire or something like that. <laughs> I know, I was thinking that, I was expecting what's going to happen here. No, um, we'll, have to, we'll have to bring you in, we'll have, we'll have to show you off. Um, so, we've got a couple of minutes left before the hour. Is there anything we haven't said that you might want to say? Anything we've missed? Ooh, anything um, you might want to leave our audience with? Any takeaways? Um, I think um, some coping mechanisms, mm -hmm. um, possibly. Um, so, we work a lot with um, self-harm. It's something we've both got a, a lot of experience in. So mentioning things that, that they can do because obviously it's a coping mechanism, it's a behaviour. Yeah, for me, it would be something to take away from this today is mm -hmm. if you're an individual and you're struggling or you're supporting a loved one that's struggling with the mental health, just start really basic. So... Oh, take fine. those long walks in nature ring a friend even if you're not going to tell that friend what you're going through ring them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then try as well in your workplace to see if you can encourage the workplace to make the, the so many workplaces now are making fantastic changes they are mm -hmm. the, there's so many people on board and the changes that have taken place in in the last 10 20 years is amazing mm. But there's still such a long way to go. Mm -hmm. So encouraging the boss to get some of you out there doing your mental health first aid training, encouraging that nice quiet room where you, if someone feels a little bit overloaded and they just need five, ten minutes to breathe, mm -hmm. just start with the small mm -hmm. and then in time build up. Mm -hmm. um, Jeanette tells me that, take a bath, put your lavender in, <laughs> I'll put my candles on. My daughter's like, Dad, what are you doing in there? I'm having the moment. <laughs> Have the sparkles of course as well. Yeah, you've really got to have important. the sparkles. It's so important. Yeah. It's yeah. Really important. Here's a technical question. Rob, do you know Rob? Stage from Vortex? 
Rob's a good lad. Yes. Uh, do you think there'll be an uptake of ISO 45? What's our 45,003? Wow. In yeah. light of the impact COVID has on workplace? Um, again, I would hope so. Okay. Um, but it's down to um, business owners to to implement that and, and to push forward. But it certainly should be happening. Um, it's but certainly the next stage. Do business owners know about that, though? It's an education piece, isn't it? I didn't even well, know that was a thing. Yeah. yeah. There's a, a lot of business now within the human resources department will employ somebody mm-hmm. or give them responsibility, and that will be their job to... Specific role. ...research that and mm-hmm. to find out exactly what is out there, what they can be awarded... Mm-hmm. and what recognition that will give them and therefore what access that gives them to, to bigger things. Yeah. But yeah, I do think there'll be a bigger uptake yeah. for that. And it is the bigger picture as well, it, it, looking at it in the long term, the bigger picture. What is the benefit of having that as an accreditation? Well, for starters, the, the, any company can kind of put it on their um, on do the literature. Would, do you think it would take you through a process that you might not have? Is it structured? Yeah, so... But, even as an employee looking to go and work for somebody. Right, okay. Yeah. And you can say, oh, these take care of the yeah, workforce because yeah, yeah. they've got all this in place. Oh, right, okay. So yeah. It's knowing that you're going to be valued and yeah, yeah. they obviously take that side of uh, the mental health side of things really seriously. So that's um, like employee traction, isn't it? We've yeah. got this in place. Absolutely. Really, you're yeah, going to retain your, your workforce if you invest enough time and effort into them mm-hmm. and, and again, kind of get to know them. My mate Bryn there is just for a little plug. We've got a group called Carp Away, so I'm really passionate about getting out into nature. And we take about a dozen people once a week. Have they join us? Oh, yes. Once a month, yeah, we Bryn, go on a yeah. walk. Bryn, Bryn's a, a regular uh, mm-hmm. attendee. And he, we call it brain breathing. It's Carl Buckley. Um, Absolutely. Praise that term. It's amazing us as leaders, we get out once a month. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, COVID stopped it, but it was so good. Getting out in nature, walking side by side as well, not looking in the eye, right? Yeah. Because it's like something, isn't it, about like, yeah. like that, but like side by side and just sharing. Is that yeah. amazing? Absolutely. It's and amazing. And it's about using that opportunity for um, for the release as well, but, but really paying attention to what's around you. So really seeing, really connecting, really looking at the flowers, at the greenery, at the, at the sky, at the scenery, taking that time. So we're, uh, more often than not, we're in such a rush to get from the car to where we're going. Right, okay. We don't take it all in. We don't drink it, if you like. So mm-hmm. very much an Eckhart Tully thing, which who I think is brilliant. There's loads right. of his stuff free mm-hmm. on YouTube. And it is about the power of the now and using that. I mean, 45 minutes of a walk in the woods reduces your blood pressure, reduces stress levels, mm-hmm. it's a better mm-hmm. night's sleep. It clears the mind naturally for focus and it grounds. So you can, anybody can walk in and be agitated and stressed and irritated over something that's happened. Mm-hmm. But they will naturally ground as they yeah, walk through yeah, the yeah. woods. Right, okay. I, I remember reading something like when you go on holiday, you get grounded because you've got your socks and shoes yeah. off and your soles mm-hmm. and your feet are on the earth. Yeah. Getting a bit huggy and spiritually here now, aren't I? But no. it's I all good. That. I love that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's what you important. say is take your shoes off. Mm-hmm. If you can't get out in the woods, if you can't get out anywhere during COVID, go in the back garden, right. take your socks and shoes off and stand on the grass. So Bryn says there, the excitement of getting lost always adds to the day because I always get everyone lost. <laughs> um, thanks, mate. Thanks for that. But, you know, we take a day out. I know you said 45 minutes. We take a day out. Now, yeah. I know a day sounds like probably to a lot of people think that's a lot of time to take out of the business. You're actually more productive when you get back. But how yeah. much more they're going to get yeah. back? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, it's the, again, it's a bigger picture. And, and yeah. sharing it with like colleagues, mm-hmm. you get back. You're like you've got your mojo back because everyone's just kind of counsel each other for a day. It's, yeah, it's really even good, staff yeah. nights out as well. You know, right. arranging staff to all go yeah. out and have a. You know, it doesn't have to be a. Mm-hmm. You know, a massive drinking Blow session. Out. Yeah, just you know, you can go bowling and have a meal. Doesn't it not fancy? <laughs> <laughs> there's there's Misha. Also, Misha, say hello to you. Look. Hi, Misha. She's on holiday, Hello, Jane, she's checking in to see you. Um, so, anything else before we go? Um, can you think of anything else? No. No? All been great. Media. See, I told you it was going to be good. fine. <laughs> All good, it just flashed like an hour. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. I did. I love these two. I had, I had to get this done. Um, it's been a long time coming. So thank you both for, for your time. Thank you, Ian. Um, thank you for all your support. No, no worries. Oh, there's You're one. awesome. And uh, everyone else enjoy the weekends as well and we'll see you very soon and thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and if any of you need some support, please reach out to friends, colleagues. 
you know, if you want to reach out to me, I've always got 10 minutes to spare for someone that needs a quick chat. You know, reach out. I'll, I'll be there. If you've left a review of late, thank you so much. It does really help the show. You know, this is not one of the big broadcasts with a massive budget behind. So do us a favor. Uh, take some time and leave us a review. I'll even send you a laptop sticker. Can't say fairer than that. As always, I'm Ian Farah. This is the Industry Angel, and thanks for listening.